Yo, what is up everyone? This is Zach Bandicoot here with another movie review of highly anticipated Mortal Kombat movie, the uh, 2021 version. As you can tell, a bit of a Mortal Kombat fan myself, ordered this uh, sick Sub-Zero shirt and it luckily arrived the tire for this review. Now the movie just released today, uh, Friday of the time I record this video. And it's available on HBO Max, but it's also in theaters. Uh, I would have loved to go to theaters, but couldn't really uh, get any friends, get anyone to go. So I decided, I'll oh, just check this out on HBO Max as I have an account. Watch it here, you know, comfort in my own apartment. Why not enjoy a few brewskis, you know, be able to pause the movie and use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, actually, I, was, I actually watched this uh uh, with my dad, sort of. He's all the way in New York. We were on video call with each other. We synced up and started each other's ends on this movie, like, exact same time. So that was pretty fun. And, uh, yeah, so, how's this movie? Now, the original Mortal Kombat movie came out in 1995. I mean, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. I liked it. I still thought it was fun. Especially for its time. It was a nice, cheesy kind of action, 90s movie. And from my understanding, the original Mortal Kombat writers, like for the game, like Ed Boon and everything, were more involved in that original movie. Not so much of this one. And I'm uh, happy to report that, you know what? It is fun. It's a fun watch. Overall, it was good. It was alright. I know. Not, I'm not exactly going to be praising it. I know, it's just... But I'm a... Judging this as a Mortal Kombat fan alone, as a regular moviegoers who might enjoy like action movies that they don't know anything about Mortal Kombat, how they enjoy this, I'm not sure. But I mean, it had awesome action scenes. It had uh, those who worked on The Ray Redemption, John Wick, the kind of fight choreography for those movies, and that definitely shows when when it comes to some of the fight, when it comes to the fight scenes, comes to the action, I think it for the most part delivers on that front. It was pretty cool. And the effects, honestly, not quite as big budget or certain movies that look incredible, like Avengers movies or even King Kong, Godzilla, which I reviewed, uh, by the way, which was my last review. But nevertheless, not too bad. And yeah, so I mean, it starts off like showing like with uh, Scorpion's Clan. I'm going to start off with saying it doesn't really follow the video games too closely. Which was definitely, and that's where it loses points. It loses points for me as a diehard Mortal Kombat fan. I played like since the first one. I grew up playing Mortal Kombat. I played every single game that was out there, and I know changes have to be made. My opinion, I feel some of the changes were kind of like, well, what the, huh? But nevertheless, I understand changes made for the movie. And some like the character choices that were in. Like you had most of the classics. One that was missing. Uh, <laughs> Johnny Cage. <laughs> Bit baffling. And the ones they included, popular characters. But like, why now? So anyway, it starts off with... Uh, by the way, this is spoiler free. Don't worry. No spoilers. No major spoilers at least. So, like, it does start off showing, like, Scorpion's backstory, you know, his clan, and, like, what happens to him with, you know, Sub-Zero being involved, taking down his clan, and Scorpion's tragic backstory, losing his family. And, I mean, it's showing the trailers, it's hinted at, especially Mortal Kombat fans, you know that story, so I don't count that as much of a spoiler. Oh, yeah, but then there are, is an awesome fight scene, though, Scorpion fighting back at some of the uh, Lin Kuei uh, members. You know, after seeing his uh, wife and son frozen solid, uh, which is cool. And it definitely shows that kind of cool fight choreography, uh, as you see in like Ray Redemption or John Wick. Uh, you might know John Wick, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, I say the Raid Redemption. Check it out. Please check it out. It's a movie from. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Brazil or something. I forget exactly where. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but definitely check it out. It's a gem. But anyway, and uh, yeah, so uh, they introduce after that like a new character to the mix, uh, which is that uh, Ko uh, Ko Ko Yang or um, uh, I feel so embarrassed. I forgot the name right now, but yeah, that new character that was introduced for. Uh, 
this movie that's not in the fighting game, that's not in the uh, video games, the fighting games. So we get his little backstory. He's like an MMA fighter, like a fallen MMA fighter. And you see from the trailer, he has that like little mark. And that plays a part in this of how fighters are selected for this tournament, which, again, is not from the games. But I guess some kind of story the director wanted to make for this movie, how to get fighters in here. And, you know, some cool scenes along from there, like Sub-Zero with Fighting Jax. You saw from the Red Band trailer, you might have seen it was Sub-Zero Fighting Jax, how he loses his arms. Yeah, like, it introduces other characters, like you saw Melina, which, I mean, introducing Melina in this without Katana? I mean, I... Okay, I mean, Leah's a popular character, get me wrong. And for those who are worried about the design of her, I know there's a bit of controversy about the design from, like, the leaked photos and everything. I'm not giving too much away. Having a report, eventually... I'm just gonna say, the mouth does open a lot more. So she does eventually look a little more like Melina. I did wish they gave her the traditional... Well, maybe not traditional, but at least a little bit of purple on her outfit. That all black, like, leather thing she's wearing. I mean... You could have added some purple on there, at least. Even, like, a little purple stripe somewhere would have been enough. And just for more, you know, look. That's all. But overall, I mean, I thought the actress wasn't too bad. Uh, I mean, I guess she kind of acted like Lena a little bit. The voice, I mean... Yeah, that's all I can say. And, um, you know, you see Cabal added to the mix. Again, it's from the trailers. So, nothing, uh, nothing that you can't watch in a trailer, I'm not going to give away. Yeah, Cabal's there in the mix. Uh, I mean, it was all right. I mean, a little bit of quick backstory, which is a lot of this in this movie. Rushed backstory on everyone. You know, I wish you'd be a little more fleshed out, but what can they do when a not even two hour long movie? You know, on everyone. And uh, yeah, then, uh, you know, they got the new guy meeting up with like Sonya Blade. He gets mixed up with Jack, Sonya, and their mission for this tournament. They get uh, Kung Lao, Wu Kang showing up, showing off their stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, Kano is added to the mix. And uh, with this, eh, not to give too much, not to really give too much away, but he's kind of involved. It seems like he's kind of helping them at first, but how about this? Just knowing Kano and his character, you can guess the rest from there what happens. <laughs> and, uh, but for this movie, there's definitely some cool Easter eggs or some like paint drawings. Uh, that you see from, like, references to other characters. Which, uh, I mean, got me definitely a little bit excited. But, again, at the same time, I can definitely say for certain characters that show up, they uh, didn't do much justice to. Let's just say, as he apparently hits down the trailer, a certain invisible fellow of a certain scaly fighter shows up. And his design was absolutely awful. I, oh. Yeah, I, I my goodness, they just did not do him justice. I, I was watching it with my dad, and I'm like, uh, and he's like, hey, what's wrong? So I text him a picture. No, this is what he's supposed to look like. And then my dad I go over video call. What? Well, why didn't they just do that? Yeah, exactly. Why didn't they? So that was a bit of a letdown there. Oh, uh, still, I mean, yeah, it's some good intros to um other characters. Oh, when Kung Lao shows up, that's pretty awesome. And, you know, like I said, there's Easter eggs. There's moves from the game that you'll very much recognize some of the special moves implemented here. That, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give them all the way. It's like a spoiler free. There are certainly classic fatalities. I'm just not talking about this R-rated movie, Gory, which a more common movie should be. I'm talking there are actual, almost for, uh, verbatim, like, fatalities, how they were performed in the video games that they do in this movie. <laughs> so uh, that was definitely a treat. So there's definitely a treat for Mortal Kombat fans. So I thought, honestly, my feelings at first were there's going to be another movie where they almost completely ignore the fans every which way. In some ways, yeah, they kind of did rub Mortal Kombat fans the wrong way, I feel. But at the same time, there definitely was A for effort for putting Easter eggs in, for putting those... Mortal Kombat fatalities in. Uh, and for the special moves that were in there. Thought that was awesome. But, but story-wise, they did kind of go 
how do I say, off the rails a little bit, a lot different. Like the whole spiel, like had Scorpions of Zero, I could say. Plays out a little different. Let's just say the original Scorpion. Uh, I'm sorry, Sub Zero. Eh. The original Sub Zero. Now there's two Sub Zeros on Mortal Kombat lore, which they didn't get into in this movie. There's the older brother, and then there's the younger brother. Now Sub Zero in this is straight up portrayed as, I would say, just straight up bad guy, pretty much. So from the trailers, when it looks that way, which I think I can give this away, yeah, straight up he's kind of a bad guy. <laughs> But I mean, this is kind of right, because in the, in the Mortal Kombat, in the video games, the older brother, Sub-Zero, the original one, wasn't exactly a great guy. I mean, he wasn't straight up evil, but he wasn't really a good guy. It's his little brother who took on his code name, Sub-Zero, which ended up fighting for the force of good. So I was definitely willing to look past that. And the fight scenes between, you know, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, which you got with the trailer, uh, definitely pays off. It's pretty cool. And like I said, the action scenes are pretty cool. I can say, uh, and there's even like a scene like during like their training uh, sequence to get ready for the tournament where, uh, yeah, one of them's like, can you do anything besides leg sweep? Like, is that your only move? <laughs> and jokingly, the character keeps doing that, keeps showing him he gets, keep getting caught with it. That's actually a reference to the original games, especially I say Mortal Kombat 2, where you can pretty much spam, especially the AI, you can spam with leg sweep over and over and over. The cheese your way to victory. So I definitely thought that was kind of fun. Now, here we go. I'm going over a list I made, a little notes. Now, how they get their powers. Uh, this is my absolute biggest gripe, and this is probably one of the number one things where the movie loses points a little bit for me. <sighs> now, there's some from Outworld. You know, they have their powers already, like Shang Tsung with a sorcery, stuff like that. But for... The human characters, apparently, when they get their little magic mark, that has nothing to do with the games, when they accept the tournament, they randomly gain some ability. That is that is their reason for it. Like, Luke Kang gets his fire, and, uh, <laughs> and a little convenience for our main character, uh, Cole Young here. I think I pronounced that right. I think I said it right. For uh, when he gets his little armor thing, you see in the trailers when he's fighting Goro. But, like, still, I, that, I just thought it was idiotic. Like, there's reasons, like, for example, Sonya has her technology when she shoots her beams. For Kano, he has a cybernetic eye that when he shoots the beam out of. Which, I mean, none of that is present in this movie. Though there's Jax, you can tell in the trailers, he loses his arms. He does get, his, he does get those robotic arms, but not nearly in the way it does in the games. But I understand how they had to rush this for a two-hour-long movie. Yeah, and, um, and I can say, uh, when Goro appeared, uh, he actually looked pretty decent. He looked a little bit too CGI in some instances, but nevertheless, not bad. Still a fun fight between him, between uh, the main character and... Yeah, nevertheless, uh, and, uh, and now let's just say there's a certain character that appears in Mortal Kombat, I want to say Deadly Alliance. And I found it pretty strange. I mean, that was like, whoa, why are you surprised? So why, why are you going, whoa? Uh, and I said to him, well, because this character can appear in this movie, but the character can appear as a fightable, as a playable character in any other Mortal Kombat game besides five or, or Armageddon. I keep forgetting about that one. Trying to forget it. It was terrible <laughs> when they included all the Mortal Kombat characters in that game. But nevertheless, like, that character hasn't been in any other game. And I mean, I think barely referenced, too, really, in any other uh, Mortal Kombat game. Which I'm hoping they bring back. If there is more DLC for Eleven, please, Ed Boon, just do it. Come on, man. A little more support for the game, if you can. Which probably not. So I found that as a surprise. Like, just... It's just decisions to bring some characters at this time. It's just baffling. And... How could they not include Johnny Cage in this movie? That's just... They had all the other originals. Like, Johnny Cage... Yes, I believe he's the only original Mortal Kombat character of the original roster of the first game that was not included. But, to be fair, I am happy to report. For Johnny Cage fans, like myself, he's... Well, under Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero is my favorite. My second favorite, absolutely, is Johnny Cage. So, for you Johnny Cage fans out there like myself... Uh, not to get into too much spoiler territory, 
let's just say mentioning the movie is a pretty good reference or so. And a little hint. That my... It doesn't quite make up for me being excluded from the movie, period, in this. But it at least gives you a little something. To maybe give you something excited about. So I'm going to put it there. So at least they acknowledge that Johnny Cage still does exist. Which was good enough. But overall, still a major gripe. I wish they just included Johnny Cage in the first place. But yeah, nevertheless, uh, and there's some and there's some dialogue reference, referencing, like the original. You can hear people say "flawless victory, fatality." <laughs> yeah, and uh, and let's just say the new character, there is a connection with him and a certain major Mortal Kombat character they added in, which was not in the video games, but to this and. It kind of plot convenience doesn't make too much sense, but kind of I understand why they did it. So the whole thing kind of comes together at the end, and there is a satisfying fight, and then the fights are good. The fights are satisfying. Uh, they are entertaining. You can tell they took the action very seriously. You know, unlike let's say the original <laughs> uh, Mortal Kombat movie. Which, they were kind of fun, but this one was really taken seriously, as you'll be able to tell watching this. So, so I can say, my verdict overall on uh, the new Mortal Kombat uh, 2021, I mean, kind of went off the rails, like I said, the story a little bit. Well, the fight scenes were fun. I was kind of, you know, I was thinking of just going with a six. But, I mean, there was some fun stuff there for the fans. Uh, the fight scenes were good. So, I can say, I'll give this a 7 out of 10. So, a nice 7 out of 10 score. It's just from a Mortal Kombat, uh, perspective, Mortal Kombat fan perspective there. So, yeah. I mean, this one won't be exactly winning any awards. But, yeah, overall... I still still enjoyed watching it. And I think it's a step in the right direction. If there is a sequel, if it does make enough money, I mean, who knows? Maybe there'll be some improvements. Maybe a sequel will be possible in the future. Who knows? I mean, it's absolutely not... It's not a garbage movie. Like, I heard some reviews. Like, I heard some reviews saying it's perfect. Some reviews saying it's absolute trash. Now, it's far from perfect, but it's absolutely not trash. People saying it's absolute garbage and trash. My opinion, I don't agree. It's definitely worth the watch. If you're a Mortal Kombat fan, and especially if you have an HBO Max account already, it's a no-brainer. Check this out, really. Take some time. Take the uh, almost two hours or so every day. Definitely check this out. And, uh, yeah. Well, it's been my uh, review of Mortal Kombat. Uh, the new Mortal Kombat movie for 2021. Uh, please let me know in the comments. What did you think? By the time this upload, uh, tonight I'll be streaming, well, Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat weekend, yo. Uh, definitely uh, hope to see you there for that. I'll be doing a bunch of, like, Towers of Time challenges, stuff like that. Like, get my butt kicked uh, with some of the harder challenges, so be there to see that. Well, but anyway, this has been Zach Bandicoot, everyone. And, until next time, uh, <laughs> y'all have a good one.